So hello everyone, welcome here to Punta del Este for round number two of the 2015B ISCA Open Wheel Championship Series. As last week was a thriller, let's see what will happen this week. As it's Josh Mertz and Daniel Bellamy bringing you the call for the Automotive Sports Network today. And we have a special treat for you. Defending champion and last week's winner, Philip Krause, has an onboard lap of the Punta del Este circuit. Welcome to Punta del Este, round two of the ISCA Formula League Championship, heading through the final chicane here, setting up for our hot lap. Entering the final turn, carrying the speed off is important. Carrying that speed does a lot for your lap time. Full throttle here, make sure you carry enough speed. Be ready for early braking for turn one. If you could brake a little bit too late, you're off. Try to get as close to the wall as possible, hit the next curb, use as much of the track as possible. Full throttle through this section, it's a right-left complex. Get ready for the next chicane, stay on the left-hand side of the track. Break a little bit early, try to get as close to the wall as possible, hug the other curb, use as much of the track on exit as you can, and set up for the hairpin turn. You can run pretty wide here, just make sure you cut back down on exit, as you see me doing here. Mash the power down, get ready for another chicane. Get right on that curb, right on the other curb, use as much of the track up as possible, full throttle through this left-hand kink, Get ready for the right-hand sweeper. This is a long sweeping corner. You can hold about 80% of crawl. You want to stay close to the right-hand side wall instead of this next cane, which is a third gear corner. Use as much curve as possible. Get right near the wall and get ready for the final chicane of the track. Stay on the left-hand side. Break at the second to the last board. Hug the curves perfectly. Get ready for the final turn. Use as, get as close to the wall as possible. Get down. Perfect apex. Use all of the track. Stay right on the right-hand side. And... That is a lap at Punta del Este. What? So, cars are on track here for the reconnaissance laps. And we have the diagram for you that you just saw. Uh, this track, like Philip was mentioning, uh, and as you can see, it is a tricky track. That's yeah, pretty reminiscent of a uh, Monaco circuit. At this time, there's really no room to run off here. It's going to be a lot of picking where you want to pass the guy at. And if you hit the wall, your race is pretty much over here. So it's going to be crucial not to lock up. As last week saw the MRT drivers start 5th and 6th, I believe, crash out within the first two laps. Um, qualifying was a duel between Philip Krause and Josh Mertz, and yes, it's the reconnaissance laps, so realistically, they wouldn't be in their normal order, but Mertz said, I'm going to get out on track first. When we go through the grid, that was a sensational qualifying session earlier today. He actually got a warning from uh, his control, because he was actually getting a little hairy in the final chicane there. He was getting a little close, he ran over the curbs too much. And they just let him know it was a warning this time, but they're going to keep an eye on him through this race. But I, I doubt he's going to be a problem. I doubt he's going to be running that blazing lap through the race. As the field catching up here, as we get ready for what should be a very entertaining race. As last week we had a duel between Bellamy and Krause. It's my favorite phrase on all ASN broadcasts. Who knows what will happen here in Punta del Este. If qualifying was any indication, Merch should give Kraus a hell of a battle. Yeah, he should, but I think a lot of these guys are kind of nerve-wracked to be here. And hopefully they could take something from this race and bring it to the more tighter street circuits later in the schedule, like Buenos Aires, Beijing, and Monaco. And a little bit of Long Beach, even though Long Beach is a bigger street circuit. This one's contained. This was a lot of drivers don't like these contained circuits because there's not a lot of room to run off. But it's really going to show the men from the boys here. As everyone at the grid waiting for the timer to run out for the reconnaissance laps, the pit lane will close, the field will roll off. As seven cars here today, same car count as last week. And the formation lap begins. As Mertz pulls away, we will go through the starting grid. On pole, Mertz from Germany, a 109.966, the only car so far today to break the 109 bracket. On the outside pole, defending champion Philip Krause, last week's winner, 
110-155. On row two, it's Devin Williams, 111-262. And on his outside, it's Daniel Bellamy, 112-553, second place driver last week. Row three, Lorenzo Lucidi, the Italian who missed last week at his home track. The Tifosi probably followed him here as Matteo Giuliano had to take a provisional. He starts fifth, 113-773. Victor Valley, outside pole last week, sixth place this week, 115-372. But something has changed on that car uh, to where he is so far back. And on the back row, it's Doug DeNice in car number 40 at a 118-404. I'm excited for this race. This is going to be good. Things will be a lot more, will be a lot hairier on the start here than last week. It looked like Philip Krause hit the wall a little bit going into the uphill sweeper. That's going to be a tough part of the track here today, that uphill sweeper. A lot of car setups are pretty much different. They're all different between the race cars. Only a handful of them are so close. Most of these cars are set up so differently that these cars could be spread out a lot more than you think. A big storyline uh, from the 81 garage. He's running the smallest brake ducts allowed by the regulations. So that could potentially come to the fore here at Punta del Este. Because you need your brakes. And if he's running small brake ducts, they're not going to be cool. Field rolling up. Seven cars. It's Mertz and Kraus on the front row. Let's see if Mertz can take the fight to the American. Or will somebody else do it? Getting ready to go for round number two here in Punta del Este for the Isca Open Wheel Championship Series. It's lights out and away we go and off the line Mertz cuts Kraus off but they're battling to the first corner. Mertz leads Kraus, then it's Devin Williams and Bellamy for third but will Kraus take the fight to Mertz? He goes to the inside. Kraus takes the spot but he runs it wide so he has to take the, uh, the spot back to Mertz who leads into the first couple of corners. Then it's Devin Williams, Bellamy and Kraus is back to fourth into the second chicane. Everything has calmed down. Mertz, Williams, Bellamy, Kraus, Lucidi, Valley, Denise. Into yeah, the like hairpin. Said, yeah, the first corner was really hair, hairy right there. We got five chicanes on this track. The first two corners are chicanes. Then you enter another chicane, the hairpin. And then a complex of just four chicanes. So this track is uh, Chicane City. As we are working on getting our countdown here for you guys as I remember last week it wasn't really that uh, fun to get working so it'll be a little bit of a delay to get it working here for you guys but hopefully it will work uh, and we won't have any issues coming to the end of lap number one as a round is Williams so that's gonna open up the gap for Mertz in car number 81 Bellamy's around in the uh, second chicane here. I don't know if it's going to be a safe Mertz car or off not. the track. So his brakes are already giving him troubles in car number 81. Lorenzo Lucidi is in second. Side by side. What a move by Kraus. He is on a charge. As a round was Bellamy and Williams. And I think Mertz has already known that he's not going to hold this lead for too long. Yeah, he decided to make a car setup change during the warm-up period. I don't know if he, he was trying to get so much speed out of it. I think he's gone over the boundaries of the car limits. As you see all the sand getting kicked up, we are right on the beach here, and the wind pushes the sand onto the track. And I don't think that is a solvable issue. The sweepers were out as Kraus nearly. That's a really uh, iffy chicane there. Everyone's been cutting there. Uh, the sweepers have been trying to get all the sand off, but it just constantly blows onto the track. As yeah, the Mertz. Playa Brava Beach. It, that is what it's called. Playa Brava Beach. I studied up on the geography. Yeah, it just blows in the pit. The start straight is on that side, so... You know, the grid, the start was hairy. And now there's probably not going to be as much traction as there would be on a regular course. As I have my stopwatch next to me, and I'm looking at our feed. The graphics crew got the stopwatch perfectly. So we're gonna, not going to have any issues like we did last week. And Mertz is enjoying that as he's ran more laps today than he did last week. But Kraus is bearing down on car number 81. Like all the Italian efforts are focusing on Lorenzo Lucidi right here in the 18 uh, DHL car. Uh, it looks like he's running a smaller 
uh, lower setup. He's bottoming out through these straights a lot. His timing and scoring has him in six, but that might be a glitch, as our timing and scoring doesn't like to work sometimes, but we'll try and get that sorted for you. He is third on track. Kraus got a huge run through the chicane. Most defends side by side. He's trying to hold him off. Will he be brave on the outside? Kraus overruns the corner there a little bit, but he takes the spot. Mertz sideways, Lorenzo's around, and the top three pushing like mad to try and take the lead as Kraus now look at the gap he's pulling already. Yeah, you know Mertz, he's got one point, so he's got one point already for starting position one. All he has to do is lead the most laps throughout the race, and if he finishes first, he'll get the maximum points. Villa Kraus got maximum points last week. So he really needs to make up a lot of ground in the standings here. He cannot afford the mistakes. So now, he's trying really hard. It looks like Kraus runs it wide in car number one. He's trying the outside. Mertz has the spot, but they're going to go side by side. What a duel between these two. Will Mertz give up? No. He pushes him out. To the lead goes car number 81. Really hairy going downhill, and now we're going to the sweeper. It looks like Kraus makes up a lot of time going into the foil chicane. We gotta see how he takes it this time. Will he be more conservative or will he go for it again? As third, still Lorenzo, but it looks like he lost his front wing. Lorenzo Lucidi has lost his front wing in the 18 DHL car. Hey, I'm not sure if... I don't know if it's really gonna affect it here. There's a lot of chicanes. The only high-speed corner is the uphill sweeper. And that corner's been pretty loose today. Drivers into the first chicane once again. Mertz and Kraus pulling away from Lucidi and Valley holding fourth and it's Bellamy, Williams, and Denice. As I think Mertz is trying to conserve his energy, I think his strategy is if he can hold Kraus up and conserve the car, he'll take a shorter stop, but Kraus runs it wide again in car number one. Off the runoff area goes Kraus. I don't know, I'm on his onboard, something does not sound right on the car. I don't know if the car hasn't warmed up to him yet or what, but it's just not right. He's running super low tire pressure. Sideways again! Because yeah, we're on board with him. Yeah, he's running them low tire pressures. He's running them as low as the regulations allow. And while he's getting grip, he's wearing them out a lot. So I don't know if the handling's getting upset with it. What? He's on board with Mertz now in car number 81. Looks like he shifted down sideways from the lead. There he goes. And around he went. And from the lead, that's the gap. And I think he must have, I think he downshifted if I heard it right. He downshifted to first, and you're not supposed to do that. A lack of concentration from Mertz. And you figure a five-time Rallycross champion should have the max concentration. He had the max concentration in qualifying, but he doesn't here, and it's showing now. Well, qualifying, it, it, it's only 10 minutes, and you basically get a couple of laps to run out here. He's used to some short races. He's going to be out here for, you know, 10, 20 laps, you know. He, he's going to be out here longer. He's working harder. He tapped the wall there. On board with him in car number 81. I know for a fact, uh, in the paddock, he was talking to all the drivers. He's, he looked at Philip Krause's car. Everyone was gathered around car number one. He points to the number and he says, I'm used to running that number, I'm not used to running mine. As he runs number one in Rallycross, and he has been for, I believe, the past three seasons. Um, he's not used to running 81, and he believes that's a psychological advantage for him, and a disadvantage to the other drivers, but obviously he doesn't have it here. And Kraus still leads, and he is pulling away, I believe, just slightly even here it looks like uh, Krause has decided to go for a race pace uh, going race pace now he's not, he's not pulling out banger laps but he's still near his qualifying time he's in the 110 as Mertz jumped the first corner there but he did give up some time I think that um, his setup if I read the regulations correctly Park Ferme is in effect as soon as you run your qualifying lap so I think whatever setup you use to set your qualifying lap is your race setup. And like I mentioned, he, he set his brake duct small so he can fly on a qualifying lap, but I think it's hurting him in the race. 
I was in the regulations meeting and they were talking about uh, regulations. They were trying park for me last week, didn't work, and they just decided to scrap it as a whole. So, for your correction there, uh, no park for me. So it must be a team mistake that they could have changed the brake ducts. Maybe the team uh, didn't get the memo. As cliche as that sounds, um, maybe they didn't because he's still running those smaller brake ducts. I know uh, the regulations were reverted towards the fan boost as there was technical problems. So the fan boost is gone. And uh, Park for May now gone too. So that will allow probably... Mertz to change his setup for next week at Olton Park, I believe. As Kraus pulling away, coming up on Doug Denice in car number 40. As the American struggling with this car, as you can see all over the track. And here's Kraus. I believe there's a blue flag regulation. So De Denice needs to get out of the way here. And he... Oh, close call between 1 and 40. And yeah, Mertz immediately on the radio saying, Doug, stay out of the way. Yeah, the well, the blue flag just means like, oh, the leaders are coming. You don't have to get out of the way. It's kind of a gentleman rule. Get out of the way, but if you constantly block the leaders and you're deliberately blocking them, then, yeah, you're going to get penalized for it. As this duel is fascinating. They are right on each other's pace, Mertz and Kraus, but I think Mertz was rattled because of... Uh, his half spin there as the countdown is correct we have five minutes until the pit lane opens and Mertz clobbers the wall in car number 81 yeah going back to the regulation thing uh, you can change the downforce and the tire pressures on your your second car but you cannot change stuff like your brake ducts and you, know, you can't swap engines out either and all that stuff so you basically run two identical cars. You can only change, you know, cosmetic details of it. So even if Mertz wanted to, he could not tell the crew to put bigger brake ducts on, for example. And that's probably what they're telling him now. They're just telling him, hey, we can't do that. It's not in the regulations. So, I think we made it known last week that Mertz was not a good car setup person. Uh, he is a driver. He's not a mechanic. And... He was down there with the crew, and he was saying, let's just throw this stuff on it, see how it works. And I think he's taking this race as a test session for his setup. Yes, he wants to win, but I figure he's going to try and hone his skills as sideways again and into the wall again. I think his rear tires are burned off, as we can see all over the track. And um, I think he killed his tires because he is slamming into everything. And it doesn't help that the track has all the sand, too. And it, it Locks it up. Yeah. Off the track. That's I going think to allow Lorenzo by. Lorenzo takes the second spot. And now I think Kraus is just going to start cruising. Because he's got such a big gap now. Yeah, I think Lorenzo's going to be faster than Mertz. He doesn't have that big front wing, that hunky front wing in the front of his car. So he could be a lot quicker on the straights. But his turning capability is going to be hindered as three minutes until the pit lane opens and this is going to be interesting from a strategy standpoint if it hits 15 minutes after Kraus passes the pit in for example Lorenzo and Mertz can pit and they would be able to run a flying lap on fresh tires and a fresh car and possibly gain some ground on car number one yeah, that's one of those that's one of the things on the time you know you Something like that happens, you kind of have to deal with it. Mertz has to go through the runoff there. But yeah, you have to deal with that, and that's where the big strategy comes into play. As, like we mentioned, brakes are a huge thing on car number 81. His brake pressure was set higher. His ducks were smaller. And I think he's going to realize that's not a good change for next week. As... As a result, he's killed his tires, and he is dropping even further from Lorenzo Lucidi in car number 18. Yeah, there was a small hint of speculation. They were working, MRT was working on a deal with uh, the Carolina team. They were sharing technical data for this race, and they're trying to come up with a partnership you know, to help set up these cars 
not actually help fund them, but just share data between the teams, and they're still working on that right now. That's Kraus. That could help out. Kraus pulling away. Um, well, well, he has been pulling away ever since Mertz had that half spin. Lorenzo Lucidi, the Italian, um, without a front wing, still hanging strong in second. Mertz is now on the bottom step of the podium in car number 81. Bellamy is in fourth, and look how far away he is from Kraus, for example. There's Bellamy, there's Mertz, Lorenzo, and there's Kraus at the top part of the track. And Bellamy's at the south end of the track. Yeah, right behind, right behind him, Devin Williams. He had that spin earlier, and he's caught up in the back. A lot of ground to make up here. Bally still heading down to the south bend of the track, the lower part. And Doug Denice just out here trying to gain more experience. He ran a little bit last year. He was starting to pick up some ground. Then we had that long off season. Kind of hindered him. As I'm and hearing, the uh, as Mertz had to cut that chicane, he is cutting every chicane, and it's not even intentional like it was last week. Uh, just struggling with the brakes. As I've heard, Victor Valley. Uh, I think the steering rack was changed considerably on car number 52, as he does not have a front wing. Um, at least for now, I don't believe, I believe he did earlier, so he must have crashed into something. Um, so struggling in car number 52. Kraus is definitely not struggling in car number one. Fastest lap after fastest lap. Yeah, the, the V2 uh, engineering group with Victor Valley and Kraus as a subsidiary, they pushed all their efforts into Kraus's car. That's what it looks like to me. And it looks like the, looks like Victor's car is gonna be the R&D car. As massive lockup from somebody, it must have been Lorenzo, as we saw a plume of smoke and a huge tire track. As pit lane is open now, if you've noticed on the ticker, past 15 minutes. So, I believe Kraus, the pit lane is open, and Kraus can go to the pit lane. So let's see if Kraus will pit in car number one. No, he skips the pit lane. So this is going to allow Lorenzo to potentially pit. Will he pit in car number 18? Lorenzo will not pit, so let's see if Mertz will pit in car number 81. Rounding the pit lane, you it see will. this pit lane entry. Pit lane speed starts at the start-finish line. On the limiter to begin the car swap in car number 81. The MRT crew ready to go as they've quickly gelled to this Formula E style of pit stops. Yeah, you get in, get out, and you just you kind of have to wait there to wait there till you get the green light. And I would like to say there was a big problem with uh, the timing going into the pit lane. As you see, they have two lines, but the start-finish line marks it, and the start-finish line is a little bit before. As we might... Here, a couple of these drivers get a penalty. Mertz out of the pit lane. As he exits the pit lane, race control has given him a drive through for speeding in the pit lane. So that, just as you talked about, Kraus now pitting. Where is Lorenzo? Lorenzo is entering the south end of the track here. Kraus enters the pit lane. Well, Lo yep. Lorenzo pits as well. He is losing time because of that uh, front wing being gone. So it's up to Mertz to see if he can get by Lorenzo in car number 18. Kraus is in the pit lane. So is Devin Williams. And so is Lorenzo. So three of the seven are pitting. So let's see if Mertz here can take the fight to Lorenzo. As Kraus is way out of the league. Let's see here. It looks like Lorenzo is running a heavy, heavy camber setup here. He's got his tires pointing way inward. So I'm looking down there at the 18 pit. Is it legal to take the front wing off? Because I don't think I don't uh, think they have a front wing on car number 18. As no, I don't think they noticed that. Mertz gets by. No, he doesn't. As he had to cut the chicane, I think. I think they might have taken the front wing off the second car. Because he does not have a front wing. I don't think that's a rule, is it? You can run without a front wing. <laughs> I 
haven't come across anything like that, so I'm dumbfounded as to how to explain this, because he obviously does not have a front wing. They swapped the car. He must have told him, take it off. And that, oh, must, no, that must be a gray area. Looking, trying to look at the regulation here, and... It just says you have to swap the car. It doesn't say anything about a front wing. Maybe... And it was, I guess, race control is looking at it too. It's trying to scrap through every rule book and see what it says. And Mertz to the outside, not... trying to take the fight to Lorenzo, and he doesn't have a front wing, so they must have taken it off before he I'm, swapped cars. I'm guessing they're still debating it. I'm not getting anything. This battle's getting good between the 18 and the 81. Kraus is gone all by himself. Bellamy fourth, Williams fifth. Valley 6th, Denise 7th, and I believe Denise has parked the car, so something must have gone wrong on car number 40, and we have 6 cars left. Just trying to figure out what's going on with the Lorenzo Lucidi situation. And official ruling, it's legal. It is perfectly legal, but I guess they're probably going to dispute what's going on next. Is that is a really strange incident, and um, the only real explanation I can have is it looks like Valley in the way of these two, so he's going to get out of the way here. The only explanation I have is Lorenzo realized he was driving faster without the front wing. They told the he told the crew to take it off the second car, and look how we we know I'd noticed there at least. Look at the braking difference. As earlier you stated, Mertz could not have different brake ducts on his second car. He dives in so much harder than Lorenzo into that final complex of corners. And I think that should be cooking the brakes as I'm hearing over the radio. He might be having brake problems. Yeah, they, and he's kind of on a solo effort today as his teammate Steve Rada did not show up here. As... So he, he, Flying solo here, you don't really know what's going on. Obviously, with a second car, you're going to have fresh brakes. But if the brakes are cooking this quickly on the second car, I think it's the problem in the brake ducts. Because he's reporting the problem on the second car. The first car we already knew because he was cutting the track, hitting the wall, sliding everywhere, killing the tires. But if it's replicating this same process on the second car, um... Not a good day for car number 81. Kraus still leading as lap count begins. Lap number 18. Remember timed races here. We have nine minutes left. Mertz into the wall and upside down in car number 81. Massive crash for the German. And for the second week in a row, the MRT car will not see the checkered flag. There's debris everywhere going into the south, uh, yeah, the south complex down there. So maybe they'll throw a safety car, maybe they'll throw a virtual. Massive crash. And I think he's climbed out. It took him a little bit as he destroyed that tire barrier. But with 8 minutes 30 seconds left, he will not see the checkered flag and will not stand on the podium in an official race yet. Remember he raced Adelaide last season, crashed after two laps. As he's had this is the longest he's lasted in an actual points race. He crashed after two laps last week. Safety car, I believe, has been deployed. It's a virtual safety car. Although, in the F1 virtual safety car, you maintain the gap. In this one, you catch up to the field, and we bunch them up. We're just trying to get it going real quick. Bellamy now third. Williams fourth. Mertz has gotten the car back to the garage, and it looks like there's confusion for Victor Valley is he is off the lead lap and he is unsure if they have a NASCAR style free pass here in the Open Wheel Challenge Series Championship Series, excuse me there um, I don't believe they have a free pass lucky dog rule you could say but I think Victor thinks there is so he's trying to catch up to Kraus here to get his lap back as Kraus at yeah, a standstill control, yeah, race control in his radio they're basically telling him hey no lucky dog, no lucky dog, and he's basically He's basically a broken record, repeating why. He's trying to pass the leader. As 
We are waiting for the rest of the field. This is going to be a fascinating duel. As we saw Lorenzo be quicker than Mertz. And I think he's quicker, quicker than Kraus. That's crazy. I think the... Uh... Yeah, that, uh, that car swap, I think that, that was the craziest thing I've seen. I've never even heard of that. As That's the only real explanation I can have, is that he told the crew that he was faster without a front wing. And I'm glancing through my edited version, or the quick version of the regulations, and there's nothing stating you need a front wing um, to compete. I mean, the teams obviously prefer to have one, but if you turn out to be faster without one, I guess you can just bash it off in the first couple laps, tell the crew not to put a second one on, and you're good to go. That'll probably be... Yeah, no, it, it's official, yeah, they're, they're going to be... I just got word that they will discuss that, and they probably will be more clear on the car swap regulation to avoid that happening. As entering the south end of the track, Kraus, Lucidi, Williams in third. So Williams has inherited the third spot. Bellamy must have spun. So he, oh, I, I believe I'm hearing he did spin under safety car conditions. Bellamy fourth, Valley fifth. So we have five cars left. We should be going green this time with five and a half minutes left to go. Field rounds the final corner. Lorenzo all over Kraus. Getting ready. They go at the start finish line. Five minutes left, Green is in the air, and Lorenzo tries to take the fight to him. Three wide with Valley, Williams, and Bellamy. Valley trying to get out of the way and into the first chicane. It's going to be Kraus and Lorenzo. Bellamy to the inside, nearly. Clips the nose off, and around he goes in car number five. It's got five minutes left in the race here. We're going to see if Lorenzo has enough oomph in his race car to get a first win and be a wild card here. Kraus trying to pull away from Lorenzo Lucidi in car number 18. The Italian, the Tafosi, followed this Italian. Giuliano was unable to make it, but the, he filled the void. Uh, Lucidi did. You know they want a victory. I think right now they wanted a podium after uh, Giuliano made an unfortunate mistake in the final corners at uh, Franciacorta. But, uh, yeah, all efforts are looking at Lorenzo right now. As how good is Kraus under pressure? We'll see that <clears throat> in a few moments' time here as Lorenzo bearing down on the defending champion. Yeah, he got all that speed just without that front wing. You know, it, it's not really a downforce wing like IndyCar or Formula 1. It's more of a, uh, you know, just kind of there, cosmetic, really. It's, An aesthetic. Look how, yeah, aesthetic. But look how much of the front tires it covers. When you don't have that, you just gain so much speed. As he's getting close, in car number 18, will he make a move with 345 left to play here in Uruguay? Kraus leads. Bearing down on him is Lorenzo Lucidi, and in third spot is Devin Williams, way by himself for the final podium spot. Bellamy fourth. Valley has, does not have a front wing, so there might be something wrong. Well, there is something wrong without a front wing for car number 52. And Williams pushing hard in car number 92 for the third spot. Now this is the battle. Brewing. brewing on the 52s and we're gone. This battle heating up. 310. Look at the countdown. That is what is left for round number two. Lucidi locks up the right front. But he does not throw it into the wall like Mertz did. Locks up the left front. Pushing ever so hard. Beginning lap 22. Hey, could you imagine someone like Lorenzo from out of nowhere coming in and just... Kraus runs it wide and takes the lead! Does Lorenzo for a moment? Yes, he does! Kraus back to second with 2.40 left to play! Can Kraus take the fight to Lorenzo? Looking! Contact between them! And off the track again goes Kraus! And Lorenzo's pulling away! I was going to say... Uh... I so yes, Lorenzo say. can be the underdog. <laughs> yeah, he could get away from, uh, he could be the guy that shakes up the championship. We thought Mertz was going to be it, but, I mean, it's only two races. It turns out he's crashed through both. Valley the there off the track, I believe, uh, for a safety issue. He knew he didn't have a front wing, so he pulled it off the track before he could crash any harder. 
because uh, as a bit of a tribute, uh, he's running car number 52. He was registered for the 25, but due to Justin Wilson's death, he renumbered his car. And Lorenzo locked up the left front again. A minute 45 left to go. And this is phenomenal. They get... We may squeeze in another lap here. We may squeeze in another lap. I'm not too sure. We got four cars left on the track now. But we got to see if Krauss can get enough uh, firepower out of that electric motor. On my stopwatch, 1 minute 20. On the ticker, 1 minute 20. So it's accurate. We should get another lap. And this should be the final lap. Here in Uruguay. Looking to the back right here, unless something drastically happens. I'm pretty sure this is how the finishing order will be. As Lorenzo followed by Kraus. Kraus trying to catch Lorenzo Lucidi, pushing hard in car number one. He's going to have one last lap, as this should be the final lap, as time will expire on this final lap. So can the Italian hold off? The defending champion who's won every single race except for two. 30 seconds left. This should be the white flag in Punta del Este. That's the gap between Lucidi and Kraus. Third spot is Devin Williams. Fourth spot is Bellamy. Four cars remaining. Valley fifth, Mertz sixth, the nice seventh. All three of those have crashed. I think Valley's gotten out of the car and he's sitting next to the fence watching this race. He has, I believe, one of the prime spots to sit and watch this race. Kraus getting close. Trying to take the fight. My phone goes off in the commentary box stating time is up. Time is up on the countdown as it's starting to count upwards. This is the final lap here in Punta del Este. The final half of a lap for Lorenzo Lucidi to try and take the victory. Krauss is going to make every last ditch effort in car number one. He tried it. He's sideways and around. So that seals it as the rear wing goes off of car number one. As into the final complex. We thought it was going to be Mertz earlier today to take the victory. It will not. Lorenzo Lucidi will win in Punta del Este as the Tifosi will go wild. He wins his first career race being the fourth winner here in ISCA Open Wheel Challenge competition. It's going to be Kraus in second. I said challenge again. It's championship. Third is Williams for his first podium, I do believe. And Bellamy will come home in the fourth spot. Oh, terrible crash for Devin Williams at the end. Hard to lick. As what a race. As I feel like you might have been talking that whole time and I might have been cutting you off because I wasn't even focused on what you were saying. So I if I did, <laughs> so I just wanted to make sure that you potentially weren't saying anything. All right. The results from Punta del Este. What a race. Lorenzo Lucidi wins over Philip Kraus. Williams will step uh, on the third step of the podium, finishing third. Bellamy fourth, Valley fifth, Mertz sixth, the nice seventh, and Giuliano and Abim Sharp got provisionals eighth and ninth. In the Drivers' Championship, after two rounds, Philip Kraus still holds the points lead, 22 points over Bellamy, six-point lead, I should say, 16 to Bellamy. Williams third, Valley fourth, Mertz fifth. That's a huge gap for the German to claw back. I don't think that's going to happen. But there is 13 rounds left, so who knows. Lorenzo equals Mertz due to his win. Giuliano, Denice, Rada, Sharp, and I believe Jeff Johnson is 11th in points with three as well. That was a very good race. Very, very crazy. You know, we talk about bending a rolls a lot in racing, and that's just, that's like bending them and just like causing stress cracks while you're bending the stick there. And he, he figured out a way around it. But it looks like they're not going to let that happen throughout the rest of the championship. As it's going to be interesting to see the regulation changes for round number three at Olton Park next week in Britain.
For Daniel Bellamy, I'm Josh Mertz. We hope to see you next week in Britain, but until then, so long, everyone.